Hey, well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Summer Devo here on this Tuesday morning. So glad you're here. Put your name in the comments. Put a prayer request there. We'd love to pray for you today. But thanks so much for being here. Glad you're here. We're studying the book of Ephesians. So grab your Bible, grab a cup of coffee, and let's dig into the Word. I want to title this devotion today, uh, really a question. And the question is, what fuels you? So as you go throughout this day, what fuel are you going to be running on? You know, I think we all can identify with times where we ran out of gas. I think about, uh, I prided myself for years and years to never have ran out of gas um, until one day I was driving to church at City Hills when we were meeting at the Center Park location. And on the way to church on a rainy Sunday morning, uh, <laughs> I ran out of gas. And uh, I was, um, I, I, I had not taken the time to fill up and uh, fuel is so powerful, so important for our lives. And Paul's about to show us the difference between um, the right, the, he's going to show us the wrong kind of fuel. And uh, I want to challenge us today to live off the right kind of fuel um, because the wrong kind of fuel will leave you like me that day, stranded on the side of the road. And so. So here, so here we go. Let's let's study this as a, a little bit longer passage today, and so we're just going to walk through it. And here's what Paul says, Ephesians four seventeen, and and so I insist, and God backs me up on this. Watch this: that there be no going along with the crowd, the empty-headed, mindless crowd. What, what's Paul saying? He's saying it's really easy to follow the crowd. And I spent a lot of years of my life being addicted to the crowd. I tell people I am a recovering approval addict, that I wanted the approval of so many people. And at, at sadly, I, I wanted the, the approval of people more than I wanted the approval of God. So I guess that's the question today. Are you fueled by um, God and his approval in your life? Are you fueled by the crowd and people's approval in your life. That's the first thing that needs to fuel us, pleasing God. Are you living to please God or are you living to please the crowd? That's a, a question for this morning. As you go about your work today, as you go about about connecting with people today, as you, are, are you living your life based on what other people think of you? Are you okay with other people maybe not understanding you, but God's get you doing what God called you to do? See, many times saying yes to God's plan for our lives means saying no to the plan of, that other people had for our lives. And so he says, don't follow the crowd. He goes on to say about the crowd, they've refused for so long to deal with God that they've lost touch not only with God, but with reality itself. They can't even think straight anymore. If that doesn't describe what our culture is walking through and who we are, that we, we, we in in society, and this was written um, nearly two thousand years ago. That any time we follow the crowd, it's never going to lead us to God. It's always going to lead us to this distortion of what reality even is, and that's the second thing that should fuel us truth should fuel us. And what do I mean by that? The Word of God. That 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 truth is not relative. This is a theme that Paul's been talking about for the last, um, it, it, all throughout this, this chapter. That truth is not relative. And if we'll follow the crowd and be fueled by the crowd, we're going to wake up one day and realize we're not even, we're not even um, in reality anymore. We're just making things up and acting like it's true. And so truth needs to fuel us um, we need to, when we're making decisions about what's right or what's wrong or what um, what what we should believe, it, we shouldn't be looking to any other place in society today except the Word of God. God's Word tells us how we should live. And Paul's about to show you specifically an area where uh, truth was being challenged by the crowd. He says, feeling no pain, they let themselves go into sexual obsession, addicted to every sort of of perversion. What's he saying? People are following the crowd. They're missing reality. And this is showing up in their sexuality. It's showing up in the way that they're sexually obsessed and they're addicted to perversion. 
And isn't it amazing that this was written 2,000 years ago, but this could, I mean, this is as relevant at this moment in history as it's ever been. Because one of the areas that we have to actively choose to not follow the crowd and to stick in God's truth instead of this false reality of maybe what culture will tell us about who we are and who what the world is and is, is the area of our sexuality. And that's the third thing that needs to fuel us. Purity needs to fuel us. If we don't watch it, we'll try to please the crowd. We'll will sacrifice reality, God's truth in our lives. And before long, we're, in, um, we're into all kinds of just wrong uh, thinking about our sexuality, about who we are, about our identity. And so purity needs to fuel us. Purity needs to be what fuels us, what makes us say, God, make me more like you, make me pure. Is there any area um, of life that, that maybe you say, God, I need, I need some purity in this area. I, I need you to help me. I've been following the crowd. I've been listening to culture. I've been doing things my way. Um, I, I need, I want to be pure in what I look at. I want to be pure in how I talk. I want to be pure in, in how I deal in my business dealings. I don't know what that is for you, but purity um, needs to fuel who we are he goes on to say, but that's no life for you. In other words, that's the wrong fuel. You learned Christ. My assumption is that you've paid careful attention to him, been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, watch this, and I mean and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. The fourth thing that needs to fuel us is conviction. What he, he says here, we have an old way of life that's really easy and comfortable and convenient, that, that it's easy just to kind of go with the flow of the crowd and, and stay um, in, our, you know, in the way of our past Maybe you're surrounded by gossipers and you can you're good at it, you know, you're good at it too, and it's easy to stay in that place of of talking about everyone and everything and um, or it could be a million things. Let the Holy Spirit show you what it is uh, for you in your life. But Paul's saying, hey, we have we can't be fueled by our old way of life. We can't be fueled by our old sinful man. We have to choose to say, God, do a new work in my life and and have conviction. We need to live by conviction, not by convenience. Say, God, is there anything in me that needs to change? Is there anything that you want to put your finger on in my life and say, I want you to do that different? You see, the more we are in relationship with God, we should know what he likes and what he doesn't like. It's like in marriage. I've, after 15 years of marriage, at most restaurants, I know what my wife likes, and I could probably get pretty close to the order that she would like. Why? Because we've ate a lot of meals together. And it would be a, it, it would be a terrible picture if I had no clue what she liked or what she didn't like. Uh, I, I would be a terrible husband without relationship. And so the more we know Jesus, the more we should know what he likes, what he doesn't like in our lives. And we need to have convictions. Not just not just go with the crowd, but but allow God to put some conviction in you. Say, you know what? Um, I, I'm going to make a choice to have a conviction in my life. And he goes on to say, and this is, this is the, fi- the, the, the final verse here. He says, and now take on an entirely new way of life. So get rid of that old life, but take on an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately, <laughs> accurately reproduces his character in you. What a, what a great verse. And I love this because change is happening from the inside out, not the outside in. See, religion tries to change you from the outside in, change the way you look, you know, change, hey, you need to quit doing this, stop doing that. Um, you're going to go to hell. Have you ever met somebody? It's a hell's a two syllable word. <laughs> but what Jesus is describing uh, is, is, is what he wants to do in your life is not from the outside in, like religion would tell you, it's from the inside out out. It's God changing our heart, doing a work in our lives, and then getting, getting, and then, then it will show in our, um, in our conduct as God 
produces character in you. So it's character first and then conduct. And so just that the fifth fuel is worship. What is worship? Worship is whenever we say, God, I thank you for who you, what, who you are and what you've done in my life, God, but, but this is who I am from the inside out. God, I, I, I'm, I'm worshiping you. And as we worship God, see, we become like whatever we worship. <laughs> we, we, we become the image that we worship. So the more we worship God from the inside out in our heart, Worship with our time, worship with our money, worship with our words, worship with our song, everything that we are. We worship our God. Worship is so much more than a song. We see God uh, change us from the inside out. So here's my challenge for us today as we conclude. Check your heart. Check your heart this morning and say, God, is there anything in me that you want to change? Anything in me you want to do a work in my life? I'm open. And I pray, have your way today. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this time that we get to spend together in your word each morning. I just bless these amazing people um, that are joining with us today. Um, Use us, Lord, to make a difference. Help us to be fueled by the right things, not the crowd, Lord, not, not, not by just whatever seems right, God, but your word, your spirit. We worship you. Lord, we know you. We've had an encounter with you. We've been changed by you, God. Lord, help us to make a difference. Help us to shine bright today and use us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, hope you have an amazing day. Love you so much. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow morning here on the Summer Devo. God bless.